Okay, mate, welcome to Friday Facts 343. We have environmental particle effects, and I've got an effective mojo with me today. Hey, mate. Hi. Uh, you're back. You're 100%. You, you sound normal. Yes. I'm normal. See, mojo's Ish. back to normal. You sound normal. That's the important thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, there was you sound the, like JD. I sound like JD. Uh, I've, we've found Discord has this lovely feature now that I can turn on that makes me sound like JD in our old... Normal. Thirty-year-old telephone. A thirty-year-old telephone booth. Uh yeah, yeah. Don't turn on the noise cancelling. Uh, at least Rock not yet. Four G. Uh, four <laughs> G, three G, two G. All yeah. of them, really, all, all the above. Them. It's actually something I miss when um, three was around. Remember three? Yeah. Oh, three. The mobile phone company. Yeah, the phone mobile company. They had the best audio quality when three G became a thing. It was amazing. I was with them. And then I haven't heard out. any mobile phones sound that good since they, got since they disappeared. Three, three got bought out by Orange or Orange bought out? Orange was bought uh, out by They were three. bought out. Oh, no, no. Orange was bought out by Three who then got bought out by Virgin. Yeah, that's it. Because I was with Virgin from being a Three customer. Anyway, we're sidetracked already. Is that a new record? <laughs> so... <are> <laughs> This one's all about the particle effects, obviously. It's written by Dom for the first half. So, they did particle optimizations, what, 20 weeks ago. This is relatively new, I think. 20 other... weeks ago already? Yeah, well, the other Friday effects... Uh, I'm the... sure it was last year, because last year was the year of the particle effects. Everyone was doing particle effects. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it was last Friday facts. I looked at it, and it was only like... I thought it was only 50 weeks ago. It turns out it was like 98 weeks ago and it didn't mentally click that that was almost two years ago. Um, because Friday Facts obviously come out once per week, not, yeah, yeah, JD didn't do maths. So, um, it always bothered Dom that the grenades and other explosions would emit the same type of particle ref uh, particles regardless of the context. In most cases, that isn't that bad and somewhat okay, but when you throw a grenade into water, it will still emit stone particles, which breaks the illusion. I disagree. I'm pretty sure that, that when a grenade goes off, even in water, there's little bits of metal shrapnel that explode upwards that would sort of look like stone at the high quality graphics that Factorio has. Yes? No? Am I stretching it too far? Oh, uh, uh, used to. It did let off splashes. I was going to say, it let off splashes, but it that's let off because... splashes, but that's at ground level. Yeah. He's referring to the ones that go north. Hmm. Like, if you see the grenade that load lands here, right in the middle of the screen, when the. Yep, yeah, there's, there's bits that go up. If you throw a grenade in the water, there's lots of splashes everywhere, but there's still solid bits of stone. Yeah, the, 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 the chunk of the ground that was exploded yeah. um, is uh, like when you hit the water, it still looks like you're blowing up dirt or something. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, which look, I, I, I gave him a pass on because not that many people throw grenades into the water for the fun of it. it. It's worth doing once, but probably many more than once it's just been cruel to the fish um so the other problem they had is they have the nice decoratives on the ground which some people hate and some people love but they don't really interact with anything goes wrong they feel like flat stickers instead of something real because when you throw a grenade right on top of them nothing happens they don't even shimmer like the trees do at least the trim the the trees shimmer in uh fear so the bushes and the grass needed to be spoken to um so they've updated the explosions. So now they have specific tile effects. One thing they want to do, uh, the one thing we wanted was some way for the tiles to respond to explosives in a different way. Uh, Priscilla added an evoke tile effect trigger. Uh, tiles can be defined, uh, tiles can define an effect that happens and then the explosion will tell the tile to create the action. Uh, he was able to design the explosions like I wanted them and emit specific particles based on their tiles. For example, beside the visual improvement stone, of the stone emissions in water, I was able to make hazard concrete emit dark grey and yellow particles. Um, and then of course we're going to have four examples. Now I see the difference on the stones and the grass. I don't really see the yellow on the concrete. Yeah, I couldn't really spot that one either. I think it's one of those, like, if you spend 30 hours working on something, pixel by pixel by pixel, you know that it's there, yeah. therefore you can see it from there on, but anybody else is just like, yes, Priscilla. Oh, no, yes, yeah, Dom. Thing. Yes, Dom. Yes, we yes, agree, Dom. Yes, Dom, no, Dom. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, look, it, it's, it's one of those little things. Um, 
I know this is all about the final polish and I know that everybody's specialized in their own different areas. Dominic is the graphics guy and the sound guy, isn't he? Uh, is he sound? Yeah. Oh, he's he just was sort of affecting sound and then he's been moved over because they've got new sound guys in. Um, I think Dom did a lot of the original sounds. Actually, there's two Dominics, I have a feeling. Very likely. Yes, okay. Um, maybe they both do sound and music. I don't know. Um, or sound, sound, sound and, yeah, sound and graphics. Um, but yeah, look, I I don't know. We're, we're, we're months away from 1.0, and I know there's a small virus thing going on at the moment, which is sort of, you know, screwing up everybody's plans a little bit. But I'm worried about the blueprint library and the other big features that need to be looked at before 1.0 hits. I like you worrying about the important things. Well, what else can you think of that's missing in Factorio? Uh, not a lot, in all honesty, is left to go. Like blueprint library, blueprint library, blueprint library? You really want that blueprint library? No, I, I'm serious. I'm serious. I cannot think of anything the game's really missing. We had the updated character GUI, okay, um, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I really like it. I'm really not a fan of the new inventory request mumbo jumbo thing because now that it's so big, I end up putting like, I'll put belts, undergrounds and, and splitters in like the first three. Okay, it's a really early game. They can go in the first three. And then at some stage, I want red belt. So I just add it to the end somewhere. And then at a later stage, the end moves on to a different place. So I end I end up adding undergrounds there. And then finally, I add splitters later on. And they're nowhere near one another. Which then means like trashing yellow belt. I just set up those. They're the first three. They're easy to find. But then I get to blue belt. And I'll, I'll request blue belt to have red and blue on me at the same time. But then I need to find the red belt to auto trash the red belt. And it's buried in there somewhere. Um, the only request I would have, which would be a feature probably a little bit more important than pretty explosive grenades, would be a sort according to, to inventory crafting tab. So, you know, everything from the first tab goes at the top and everything from the second tab goes to the second one and the crafting um, or intermediates goes to the third one and military goes fourth one i can't remember what the first two tabs are called in the crafting menu first one okay, first one or second logistics yes second one uh yes yes <laughs> yes see logistics crafting it is where all the assemblers live Don't know. Uh, I play too much Factorio and I can't answer these questions. What kind of Factorio player are you? Can't remember what goes where. In which each menu. tab does the which, assembler which go on, Mojo? The second one. Don't you know nothing? Uh huh. Boilers. Second one. Steam engines. The second one. Uh, colored wire. The first one. Logistics. Why does Coloured Wire Logistics Mojo? Because it goes with Power Poles, which is also Logistics. Power Logistics. Uh-huh. And yet Copper Cable goes on the third one, which is used as a Logistics to move power. Copper Wire is there. Because uh, it's an intermediate for crafting. Because all the intermediates go on uh, the intermediate tab, the third tab. Uh-huh. Offshore it Pump? The second tab, because it's production. It's not. It's in logistics tab. Okay, so we're going to keep moving. No, it isn't. It's in, offshore pump's in the second tab. It's not. It is. It's not. No, you're thinking of the regular pump. That's in the first tab. Uh, where's oil? Yeah, the pump jack, the second tab. And the refinery and everything else is in the second tab? Second tab. Uh, the yeah, pump um, sure. is with pipe in the first tab. I'm pretty sure it's in the first tab. The, no, offshore, offshore pump's in the second tab. It's next to... It's nowhere near steam and, and boilers and all that stuff. Unless it's been moved in one of the latest versions, which is possible because I haven't uh, played a game in a month. Oh, yeah, true. Well, actually, you're playing it today. 
Oh yeah, there's a play. Well, it doesn't count because it's a total convert. Yeah, uh, look, look, it's the same as you know. How do you copy and paste? And I've had people ask me this so many times. How do you copy and paste from an assembler to a um, a requester chest? And my answer is, I don't know, muscle memory. It's it's a shift, left click, right click, alt shift, combination. Shift, right click, shift, left click. Yeah, it's it's some combination that involves shift and mouse buttons. I have no idea. It's muscle memory at this stage. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of those things. And I think the crafting tabs are the same. They're all muscle memory. Um, I, I do know I look at the crafting tabs sometimes and go, why the hell is that there and not there? But yeah, whatever. Um, so back to the front effects, because that's the second sidetrack so far. Um, they've kept in mind that p people might want to tint all the new particles for mods. So they kept every everything as tintable as possible. So a modder can just use their particle definitions. Uh, and for instance, if they want to have purple terrain, they can tint the shrapnel, I guess. Um, the shrapnel particles purple. Uh, and they can use the same sprites with different tints also. Uh, saves them some VRAM as the game applies the tint during the render phase. So again, they're thinking about optimization. It wouldn't be woob if, if they didn't. Um, always optimization. Always optimization. And again, thinking about modders because, yeah, I'm pretty sure, actually, I, I in fact, I actually know there is purple concrete already in the game as a, um, it's the one Clonan added, the one that's only accessible in editor. Uh, like lab tiles. Yeah, it's it's the purple concrete he added for the scenario, and on top of that, um, I actually know of a mod that added Teflon Creek, uh, and I think that's what it's called, for even faster run speed. It's also super expensive. Uh, of course it is. Of course it is, but it also comes in many, many different varieties of colors. So, then we have decoratives. Uh, Priscilla also added to the end... Uh, Added the engine change required to remove de decoratives on impact and for the decoratives themselves to create some particles on their destruction. This makes it feel much better when you see the explosion because you see the decoratives, decoratives reacting as if they were real. It does not break the immersion of the game. It also helps make the explosion feel a bit more powerful, at least powerful enough to blow over a bush, which is true. And... Um... Look, it's probably been needed for a long time because I have seen people get really grumpy that they can't move their the shrubs and the trees, the, the not the real trees, the fake trees, out of the, the middle the, of their um, the, the ground doodads, which sit on top of concrete and everything. Well, yeah. they're not quite concrete anymore. It used to. Oh, no, 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 no. Some get removed when you pave it and some don't. Some don't, no. Right, and, and we actually have a perfect example here of shrubs and rocks and all sorts of things popping through the concrete, um, which is annoying and i have seen people stream that are new to the game that have been running around trying to blow this stuff up and then i've gone do you know if you go into your settings you just turn them off and they don't see them at all um and that's what they've had to do because they got really grumpy that it stuck through their paths um so yeah uh, the reaction is also based on the individual uh, decorative so each individual decorative will emit a different set of particles uh bushes will give grassy stuff stones will emit some stone particles uh, again they use the same titty uh, system here so a brown bush and a green bush will have the same particle sprites just tinted accordingly uh so now i want to find purple bushes and blow them up yes. of course why wouldn't you want to blow up a purple bush well i've seen the green ones so far um i don't think we've seen brown ones so far but i'm pretty sure that there was some purple ones added to the game uh, when they brought out the purple and blue trees. Um, so why not? Why not? Um, so yeah, uh, this of course a nice benefit to a lot of players that now grenades could clear the decorative. So you do some explosive clearing of your pristine factory floors. Um, I'm counting the time until somebody gets the artillery out and just goes just like carpets the base. <laughs> either carpets the base of like this is where I'm going to build my factory. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to lay the concrete, and then I'm either going to nuke it to not let any doodads live through the process, or I'm going to get the artillery out and use one of the bombardment remotes to just carpet bomb the whole area, and just go. Yep, I don't have to worry about any rocks or trees or shrubs or anything. The whole thing is dead. Um. Ah, uh, the good old scorched earth policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. If everything's dead, nothing can survive. That's the only way to do it. Exactly. Um, so, 
we have our last part of this Friday Facts, the Minimal No Base mod. And this is written by Clonan, which I was actually sort of surprised because it's actually coded by Bilka. Yeah, so, this is done by Bilka, but eh, Clonan's showing it off. Yeah, look, I, I know Clonan's showing it off, but I it's one of the ones I sort of would have expected because Bilka's put in the effort to write it, uh, well, to code it, I sort of expected Bilka to sort of do up the, the, the talk post. about it yeah they do up the post and, and, and in the friday facts um so bill crew spent quite some time in the last month working on a new mod for the game uh well it's more of a mod that allows a removal of the base mod so actually we should pause there and just go okay factorio is unique most games that come out run on an engine and if you want to buy or license that engine, you get charged like a significant amount from the development company. And Mojo is going to help me here. Counter Strike, I want to say. Uh, Source Engine. Yeah. So they built a mod inside Half Life, and then had to team up with Valve to have enough capital to purchase a license to the source engine to then put out their game for counter-strike 1.6 i want to say or was it counter-strike 2 uh, uh counter that counter-strike um i'm actually thinking of csgo i think maybe it was CSGO. um one of them it went to a legitimate game on the engine run by a legitimate dev development team where they actually bought a license to the code well, Counter-Strike 1.6 was more or less just a mod for Half-Life, the original half -Life. Okay. So was it when we went to... Is it CSGO or was there a Counter-Strike 2? I, I, I'm i not a Counter-Strike player. I can't remember now. I think CSGO was its own engine. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's Source Engine. So, and that would be the one. Yeah, so it'll be CSGO, which was its own independent game running on the Source engine. So somebody else runs or owns the engine, and then you take the features. It's like um, like Satisfactory runs on the Unreal engine. So Unreal owns the engine. They do all the coding for the engine. You build a game around that engine. In the case of Factorio... They fa made their own engine. Which is, it's actually unusual. Yeah, well, Factorio is the engine. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess there's probably some internal name that they have for the engine itself. But yeah, they basically made their own engine from scratch. And when we say engine, we're literally talking about the thing at the front of the gu car, the guts that makes everything else work. The actual underlying thing that makes it run. Yeah. Um, so Factorio is unique that if you go to your mod section, there is actually a mod called Base Mod. Which is Factorio itself on the Factorio engine. And if you turn that off, you'd actually open up the Factorio engine without actually opening up Factorio. Which then means you could take the game and make whatever you want inside the Factorio engine. Um, yeah, it's a style of engine that's very, very rarely done these days. Most games, uh, you can't separate out the base component. It's just always there. No, most games either don't make an engine outright and they buy, rent one from somewhere else. Or if they do make an engine themselves, it's it's really the engine and the game are tied together. They are very, very much interweaved. And you'll find this with, you know, like, you'll find this with games. Um, I can't think of any good examples. Right, right Oxygen moment. Not Included would be one, which is its own engine. But you can't pull out the base game. Yeah, but uh, there's 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 other games um, where you know they're on version two. Actually, uh, Fallout seventy six is built on a particular engine, which oh, yeah, that's has, built on the Skyrim engine. Yeah, which has bugs from Skyrim still in it. Which actually has bugs from Oblivion. Yeah, because they've just they've taken the same engine. They've they've obviously done improvements. There's there's upgrades to the engine to give them more features and that sort of stuff. But there's still core bugs in it. And, and you know, Skyrim, Fallout 76, the games are not not really identical. They're like a significant amount different. You call them two separate games. Um, and they implement the engine in mostly the same way because it's designed to do one thing. Factorio, yeah, you, you could... And I'm waiting to see it. I'm waiting for Clonin to write an, uh, an RTS game in the Factorio 
space engine. I'm curious how that would work out because that would that would be interesting to see. Clonan's got this thing for RTSs. We've got our construction drones, we've got our mining drones, we've now got our transport drones. He's got the... Uh, I can't think of the name of the mod, but there is a mod that lets you control units like an RTS. Uh, he's got the hive mind mod, which lets you take over the biters and somewhat control the biters as like groups, um, not really individual units. Um, whereas, I think it's the one's called... I can't remember the other one. It's total something. Uh, total control, maybe? Um, which then lets you have individual unit controls. So, yeah, I, I'm waiting for the time when um, Clonin starts making a mod that's an RTS in, factor, in the Factorio engine. And I will probably definitely play it. I think we'll all give it a go. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah. So, back to the extra Friday facts. Bilker ran, or uh, Bilker wrote a not mod mod. Um, because anytime you try and launch Factorio without having the base game installed, you'd basically get hit with a horrible, horrible error where everything broke and died and crashed. And you'd have to rewrite a certain amount of the base code um, by literally opening up the game, seeing what the crash was, and we can see it here, you know. Um, unknown uh, recipe, well, unknown, yeah, unknown, uh, unknown. Because yeah, there's no recipes. Yeah, there's no recipes, there's no furnaces, there's no rocket silos, there's a certain amount of things, and I've actually looked at the code already, like there's, there's ammo, which is defined, there's energy, um, as in, you know, energy in the power network, um, there's repair packs, there's weapons, there's... Uh, can't think of any others off the top of my head. Uh, actually, personal batteries, they're, they're defined in the base code. Um, so there's a certain amount of things that are all defined in the base code that you needed to even open your mod total Factorio conversion mod to even see whether it worked. And what Bill has actually done is basically written a foundation of these are the prototypes that you need defined. His model actually defined them all for you. So then you can start making a total conversion mod of whatever the hell you want. And um, it, the mod is written in, I think it's the MIT license. So it's full open license. You can do whatever you want with Bilker's code and Bilker's work, um, which we definitely appreciate. And I'm curious what comes out of this. This is... Oh, that can't be, that can't be good if it's MIT license. That's pretty open-ended. It is extremely open-ended. Um... But that means that people can spin off their own games freely. Yes, using Bilker's... Using Bilker's MIT code. I yep. mean, you can't take the Factorio engine and libraries, binaries, it's, but you could easily take something which is a mod and spin it off into your own game if you package your own engine into it. Yes. Yes. So we could have the situation of Dota in Warcraft 3. Pretty much, yes. That's this pretty much setting up the entire situation. But you can't have Dota as a separate entity. Yeah, you can't specifically have, do that. Yeah. But if you come up with your own novel game mode, you could you could conceivably ha have it as its own thing. Yes, and then you have two options. You could either code the whole thing from scratch with your own engine, or you could potentially approach Woob and say, I'd like to buy a license to your base code. And then you could turn around and sell Dota for Factorio, as this is... Dota Dotorio? Dotorio, yep, yep, yep. I, I could already see some people dribbling down the comments. Dotorio, they'd play it. Uh, you'd have definitely have to have the engineers versus the biters and have separate heroes. Um, the weeb have, engineers versus the weeb biters. Uh, I have no idea if they're going to have multiple characters. You know, you could have a male engineer, a female engineer. You know, there is certain assets out there already. Um, you definitely have to have Compatron on one of the teams. Oh, definitely. I, I don't know if it's going to be on the biters team or the engineers team, but Compatron could go either way. Bit of a wild card. Yeah, yeah. I was so, going to say, we we definitely have seen the fan art for, both, for the weeb um, engineer and the biters. Oh, yeah, look, there's, there's, there's been some interesting fan art that we're not going to go into. Um, but, yeah, look, I'm I'm interested where this will go. Um, yes, it does open up the p 
potential for stuff like Dota in War 3, which was a ongoing problem for... An ongoing issue for Blizzard in the long run, I guess, is probably the politest way of putting it. Um, and I'm interested to see if something like that comes of it, if if Woob's open to something like that taking off. Like, at the moment, we're doing the Biter Battles, which actually, there's a Biter Battle at... Uh, uh, an hour after stupid o'clock yeah at 1 a.m an hour after my my um uh sub x recap episode goes out i'm live on twitch doing the final match of biter battles because it starts at 1 a.m australian time yeah lucky me um so yeah there, there's there is stuff out there like the biter battles um which you know, is built currently in a scenario code inside the Factorio engine. Maybe some of these total conversion mods end up taking off and somebody builds something really, truly unique, but being able to go in and actually start balancing things properly. Because I know PvP in Factorio just did not work. Um, no, it, yeah. it was okay for a while, but then it just became uh, a race to see who could uh, execute which exploit the fastest. Yeah, basically... Uh, the engineer's health is not designed to take on the engineer's weapons is the long and the short of it uh, it's designed to take on biters which scale from 50 hit points to 3000 hit points and the engineer scales from 100 hit points no 300, 350 hit points to 350 hit points maybe you can stack on an extra 1200 hit points worth of shields um, but that's super super late game getting the weapon damage to do 500 hit points of damage is pretty easy actually um because 500 hit points is what medium biter uh yeah something like that. i want to oh, say medium biter mm, i've done too much biter battles anyway um yeah Let's i'm see I, I i'm curious where this goes it, it could go nowhere it could go everywhere um by the same token they have left it open so you never know in 10 years time five years time you might have somebody bring out a total conversion mod for Factorio then. That's always a possibility. Yeah, it'd definitely be interesting to see at the very least. Yeah. So I think that's it for Friday Facts. What yeah, number are we on? Much it. that's, 343. That's really not that much going on. Ah, uh, there's always something going on. There's always something going on. Oh, there's always something going on. It's just whether or not it's really of significant detail or of any kind of significance overall. It, it, it means that they're getting closer and closer to revealing a blueprint library to us because they're running out of time. They have to do it. It, it has to go out before 1.0. It has to or be Or it comes with 1.0. Oh, I hope not. I hope not. I could definitely see them not being 100% stable on day one, which I would hate to see. I'd hate to see Woob get, get be so good and then get to the final finishing line and have to push something out at the last second and it just be... Less... What will happen is they'll probably do a release candidate a few weeks beforehand. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a release candidate two weeks to a month beforehand. And um, and then eventually on the day 1.0 comes out, whatever the, the current experimental stable release is, whatever it happens to be, just rolls over and becomes 1.0. Um, that's what I'm expecting, but we, we don't know. We're obviously not on the dev team. We've got no idea, but we can speculate. And with that oh, said, we can speculate all day long. Yep, we can. And with that said, I'm kicking Mojo off the mic because that's the end of Friday Facts 343. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, thank you Mojo for showing up. Hi. Um, uh, hi. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. -bye.